increasing their risk of erectile dysfunction, of heart attack, of stroke, of blindness, of, of every organ in their body shutting down and ceasing to function. But since the, their doctor says, well, you're relatively skinny, Mark, you've got a little belly pooch, but that's it. That's no big deal. And and you feel like shit. You got no energy. You got no get up and go. You're gaining weight. You, 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 you just you feel like crap. But your doc says, well, you're skinny. Therefore, you're healthy. And they send you on your way. Every every guy with any of these symptoms that we talk about, you need to go to your doctor and politely, respectfully demand those five tests and then also ask for a, a free and a total testosterone while you're at it, especially yeah. if you're having fatigue and no no drive, no get up and go, uh, because you might have low testosterone in addition to having prediabetes or type 2 diabetes. And Mark can tell you what the combination of low T and, and prediabetes and hyperinsulinemia. What what did that feel like, Mark, back when you had all those? Well, I can certainly say that you, you blame yourself. You, you don't feel like the man you were born to be. You don't have a lot of energy. You're up and down all over the place. You don't sleep well. You pack on the fat. You try your hardest to get lean and muscular, but nothing seems to work. So one of the biggest lessons that I learned was the first video that brought you here and it's linked below. The system has screwed us men. They don't care about your low T. On the previous video, we saw how important high optimal testosterone is for men. Now you don't need it extraordinarily high, but you need it above a certain level. And I'll show you what that level is here today. So one of the people that I worked with at the beginning of 2018, and when he went over my blood work, he kind of said to me that, you know, I was told that my blood work looked fine, but they weren't checking for all the critical blood tests for men. And they weren't getting into optimal levels for human health and performance. So he said to me, thinking your blood test is fine because it falls within normal ranges is like saying that you nailed your math test because you got 50. So if your energy is up and down all over the place, you don't know what to do, you're lost. This is what we need to get right. We need to have the right blood panels and we need to get it into functional ranges, not these wide pathological ranges, but functional ranges. And it's not too difficult. So another thing that I like to think about is that back in the day, in my late teens, you know, I had a, a Ford Cleveland 351. It had a holy carb, a 32 store converter on a lumpy cam. And, you know, that felt really good driving that around. And at the time I was pretty healthy. I was lean and I had a lot of energy. So I like to think of the V8 engine. We've got one inside our body, but somewhere along the, the road there on my journey, unbeknownst to me, I downgraded my V8 engine for a four cylinder and I had no clue. Late 20s, I felt like shit. I was packing on the weight. I had anxiety. Early 30s, panic attacks, you know, borderline alcoholic, and I felt like a worthless man. So the first thing that we have to get right is blood panels. I'll reveal to you what Dr. Ken recommends to get the basic ones, but if you want to go super advanced, I'm going to show you where to get a PDF to do this yourself. All right? So if you want that V8 engine inside you fired up, revved up, ready to go, we've got to get this right. So one of the biggest problems that I'll show you probably halfway through this video is this one blood panel here. It can screw up all of those hormones. So the pituitary gland is the one that releases all of these hormones. So growth hormone, oxytocin, testosterone, not, it doesn't release testosterone, it actually releases LH, luteinizing, to make testosterone. Then you've got endorphins, your feel-good hormones, thyroid, aldosterone, vasopressin, melanocyte stimulating hormone, just one thing can screw up all of that. And your doc very rarely checks it. Hell, I, they never checked mine. It wasn't until I was, it was, until it was 2018 that I first got this checked. It was way out of range. So I had to fix that very quickly. So that's what it looks like when you're struggling. So that's me there. That was mid thirties right there. And, you know, I was doing everything I could to get lean and muscular. Couldn't do it. I had no clue. 
So I started working with a pro bodybuilder and I eventually got the body that I wanted, but I was on TRT then. I'm off TRT. And I'm 52 in July this year. And that's what I look like now. And it takes a bit of time to get there, but you can certainly get there just depending on how much body fat you got now. But when you've got elevated insulin, here's the problem. And just before we speak about that, this is the problem. Re recall earlier that I said you've got these wide ranges that mainstream says you're fine. Then you've got the optimal ranges. So look at this one here. What we've... Insulin, they say anywhere from 2.6 to basically 25 is fine right? Functional range is completely different range. Look at this juxtaposition, two to five. <laughs> that's fasting insulin. That's one thing alone. So when your insulin is elevated, guess what? It is tough to do. Tap into your body fat. That's right. When insulin is up a bit too high, it makes it extremely hard to tap into your body fat. So it's got to come down. And that's why these optimal ranges will get rid of this physique there and allow you to start ripping off your body fat and getting you to a place where you've got energy. Now think about it. You're tapping into your body fat and your body fat's fueling your energy. So one thing that I'll talk about as I do videos in the future is actually how I got to that place. And this is how I think about it. It's a linear progression. So you've got hormones like your androgens, DHEA, testosterone, namely free T and free dihydro. Then you've got thyroid hormone, growth hormone, adiponectin, and you can use advanced, supp advanced supplements. I tend not to anymore because I don't, I don't believe you need to. Then you've also got transporters. So you've got to transport that fat from, the, from your body fat into the mitochondria, the only place that you can burn it. So if you lack good vitamin and mineral status, you're out of luck. If your receptors are gone, your hormones are out, you're not going to be transporting it too much and your trigs can go up and that can cause inflammation in and of itself. And we'll get to that in a moment. Then the only thing beyond that transporter issue that will screw you up are the inhibitors. So this is well researched now. You've got endocrine disruptors. If you've got lack of vitamins and minerals, as I mentioned before, in the transporter, so they kind of lend themselves to each other. But if you take too many vitamins and minerals, it can cause inflammation in the body. Then if you've got chronic stress and inflammation, and I'll explore exactly what that means next, then again, clearly, if your insulin or your glucose is too high, because glucose is going to raise insulin. And another concerning thing that is detrimental is androgen receptor expression comes down, right? Every single morning, you've got an opportunity to switch on genetically your androgen receptors to be recycled. And there's lots of things that take them out. And I'll show you one of them, well, actually a couple of them here today that takes out your androgen receptors. So think about that. You're on TRT. You've got high optimal testosterone, but your androgen receptors are shit. So when you try to build muscle, it doesn't work too well. When you try to drop body fat, it doesn't work too well. So we've got to make sure these androgen receptors are on point too. Now, the only place that you can burn body fat is in the mitochondria. There's three things, three powerful things that I use every single day to ensure that I'm burning through my body fat. So let's just explore that for a moment. So the mitochondria here, they are the only place you can burn your body fat, long chain fatty acids, and also long chain fats coming in through nutrition. Then something I'll speak about in the future is called the Omega Index. What we need to do is listen to the new research, cutting edge new research and get our index above 8%. And that's not hard to do. And the final thing that I'll speak about in future videos is non-exercise activity thermogenesis. And this is like a magic trick to rip, ripping off body fat. So it's, you know, when you use that platform, you've got optimal testosterone, you'll eventually get to that place. From here, it can take probably say seven months to get to that place there, right? And tea is a big part of it. It gives you a lot of energy, a lot of motivation. So again, why does the system brush off like tea? Probably because they want us to struggle. They want us to just get through the day, struggling through the day. So we work for the week and we pay our super and our taxes all the way to 65. And on that journey, our brain and our body turns to mush. 
And after 65, when we're supposed to retire, we should be living our best life, but it's getting worse. So I don't want any part of that. I want to make sure that I'm listening to the new science, cutting edge new science. I've, I'm testing the right blood markers and I'm getting them in optimal ranges. So with all of that said, is it a ridiculous idea to think that if you can't get your blood, your blood panels optimized, you can't get that physique? And also show up like a boss, be calm and controlled and confident under pressure. We can get there. What you might know about me is that I've also had my genetics done and we'll speak about that in future videos. And when it comes to anxiety, I'm in the 98th percentile. So it makes perfect sense to me why I had performance anxiety, panic attacks, and I was deeply worried about what other people thought of me. But now I speak on stage to other men to show them this framework so they can live their best life, reach their full potential. So another big problem that I'll just go into now are our antigen receptors. And we won't worry about these two things up there. This will be for the next video. So just take your focus off there for a moment. So you've got endocrine disrupting chemicals and what they can do is destroy not only your estrogen receptors alpha and beta but also your antigen receptors and your progesterone receptors so you might want your estrogen receptors destroyed a little bit but i, I recommend not because estrogen increases bdnf brain derived neurotrophic factor factor and it also protects your heart and your microvasculature too so we need estrogen at healthy levels that's the point but these chemicals, they are destroying your antigen receptors. And we're going to talk about that in the next video. And things like coercitin, right? This research paper, down regulation of the antigen receptors. And I'll just quote, AR, antigen receptor, protein expression is inhibited by coercitin in a dose-dependent manner. So everything I put in and on my body goes to what I call the androgen receptor, and testosterone pathway test to make sure it's optimal. Now, one blood marker that's extremely important, as we'll learn, is C-reactive protein. Now, that's my genetics there. And this plus plus says that I make a lot more inflammation than the average person. Now, my C-reactive protein last time I got it tested was 0 0.27, so way down low. And here's the problem. If you go do a standard panel, guess what they say is fine. They say three and below is okay. Not quite. One and below is optimal. So you can imagine if you go your standard, get a standard panel and it's say 1.5, you still got low grade inflammation there. And what's the problem with low grade inflammation is this. So this is my advisor and friend, Dr. Jade, who did a five-year PhD on hormones and cholesterol and is a genetic expert. So when you've got low-grade inflammation, this is what's happening. I mean, the problem with inflammation is it shuts off muscle growth. It basically tells your body you're in a stress state, so not, it's not a building state. Yeah. So when inflammation goes up, so does cortisol, and that's a exactly. solid state for the body, the exactly. exact opposite of what we want. Correct. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So when inflammation goes up, so when you've got that chronic low-grade inflammation that you could have because you're not in optimal ranges, cortisol goes up too. So you've got more cortisol than you care to have. So that drives into muscle wasting. And guess what else elevated cortisol does? You're making your, your testosterone, right? It might be suboptimal, but guess what's happening to your, to your testosterone? So what testosterone can do, which, which isn't cool, especially if it's because your blood, isn't, your blood work isn't optimized yet, your testosterone goes through the aromatase enzyme and turns in estradiol, E2, the most potent form of estrogen. So you've got estradiol, E2, you've got estrone, and estriol. We've got three forms of estrogen. So we want to make sure that we don't have elevated cortisol or inflammation. So what else? So I want to give you as much value as I can here. What else can trigger that process so we become here, estrogen dominant? Right? We struggle with energy, motivation, libido, all of it. 
If you want to learn more about what low T does, the video below, the one before this is linked below. But insulin, so we've already spoken about insulin. Now remember that a standard panel says 24.9 is okay. Optimal ranges is five and below. So two to five, and they say 20, 24.9 is okay. So what's gonna happen? Well, all your hard earned tea goes through aromatase, turns into estrogen and you become estrogen dominant. And when you're producing way too much estrogen, all sex hormone production is shut down until estrogen is brought down to healthy levels. So just to explore that now, what you see on screen there, those five numbers, is everything that can shut down testosterone. There's a lot more that does it too, but this is just a big 30,000 foot view. So sex steroids, number one, when estrogen, progesterone or testosterone is high optimal, we're shut down. So this is why we wanna make sure we're not wasting our tea and turning it into estrogen. Think about it, you've got low T and you're biasing it to go towards estrogen. So we're just clamped. We just can't make testosterone. And as you learned in the first video, and as I learned from Dr. J, my advisor, when you've got chronic low testosterone, the testes, your, the factories that make your man juice, your tea, they shrink. But exciting, but, what, but what's also exciting is you can actually increase testicular volume. It takes a bit of time to get there, but you can certainly do it. The research is out. Now, clearly what we've just spoken about, inflammation, we need to have healthy inflammation below that one on a CRP test. Then stress, clearly like cortisol is going to shut you down. If you've got low blood sugar, it's going to shut you down or environmental stress, the chemicals. But what's worth a special mention are the estrogen-like endocrine disrupting disrupting chemicals, they mimic estrogen. So if you're getting a healthy dose of those, it's gonna shut you down. It's a stressed out world out there and this is a big cause as to why this is happening. And number four, you've got drugs. And number five, metabolism. So when your thyroid's not working properly, your energy's up and down, you've got hyperglycemia, which means blood sugar too high, leptin, insulin resistance, all of that. We're not gonna make high optimal testosterone. And it comes back to that thing that I mentioned earlier, chronic low T shrinks the old testes. But we've got a second pathway. We won't speak about that today, which is called the Kispeptin pathway. And Kispeptin, my friends, is a powerful libido. So we wanna make sure this whole gonadotropin releasing hormone system is working in pristine, in pristine functioning. And we can do that. So, what we've covered so far is you know, how you can burn body fat to get to a place like this. And we've got androgen receptors that we need to take care of. We've got to take care of inflammation. We've got to take care of insulin, cortisol, xenoestrogens from food, from chemicals, and free fatty acids. So when you go to your doctor and you get what's called a triglyceride test, here's the problem. They say that if you're 150 here or 149 below, you're fine. Optimal ranges is 100 and below. So when you've got free fatty acids, you know, in the 150 range, what's happening? Again, the aromatase, testosterone, aromatase, estrogen, and you're becoming estrogen dominant. And you can fix this. And that's, that's the great news. So one thing that I want to speak about very, very passionately about we hear a lot of, of people talk about you've got to have a lot of antioxidants polyphenols and flavonoids coming in your body well here's the problem you get too many of those coming in your body they can screw up your androgen pathway your testosterone pathway all right now listen carefully to this dr j again the legend he has shown in his research that test, here's a, here's a research paper too that speaks to it. There's many more research papers out there like it. When you get your testosterone to a certain level, which I'll show you exactly what that level is towards the end of this, you get it to that level, it inhibits the interleukins, inflammation, TNF alpha, right? So we're talking all of that inflammation comes down. So I've got two videos here that I'll play from Dr. J. Then we're gonna really start piecing this together. Discs in the back, it goes back to testosterone. You testosterone. probably have some low back stuff. But this plus plus in this gene, almost everybody complains of low back pain and things. Yep. Uh, 
but it's all about testosterone to keep that at bay to protect against future problems there. Testosterone, yeah. testosterone, how, testosterone. How does testosterone do that? It shuts off interleukins. And interleukin is kind of like CRP. It's a form of inflammation. Right. Okay. And there's 24 of them. There's IL-1, there's IL-2, there's IL-3, all those 24. And some of them are in your no- knees and some are in your elbows and some are in your discs and your back and some are in your right. brain. Yeah. And so like this particular one, IL-1-alpha, it's called interleukin-1-alpha. It's in your discs in your low back. Yep. And it can get out of hand and just cause specific low back disc degeneration and disc pain and her bulging discs and all this kind of stuff if you have inflammation there all the time and testosterone shuts it off so i guess testosterone would be a very powerful lever to pull down on to get rid of inflammation when it's up at the right yep. level exactly yeah mm. in general yep. especially in the low back yeah mm. <clears throat> that's why the drug companies hate it right because if you have nice <laughs> high testosterone it's going to heal a lot of chronic issues that they they're prescribing drugs for like arthritis and gut issues like ibs they have all these drugs for irritable bowel syndrome yeah you know yeah, yeah. it's just like on and, and on testosterone is like a magic trick to bring down mm-hmm. inflammation all over the body exactly exactly so, so did yeah. you hear that but yeah the bone density is good he's got did you hear that so think about that you get lower back problems you got arthritis testosterone lowers that inflammation so we've got to have consistently optimal testosterone it doesn't need to be super high and i'll show you what that is but what needs to be optimized is your free t and free dihydro so that's one of the biggest things that i work on now today is optimizing free t i've seen some guys that we've helped and they've had 800 even 900 and they haven't felt the effects of testosterone coursing through their veins and when we look at their blood work their free T is, you know, under, you know, well under where it should be. So the free T is what goes into the muscle to build muscle. It's what goes into your brain to lower fear and anxiety and increase motivation, effort, confidence, courage, optimism, all of those things. So what we want to ideally do is 24 seven be optimizing for free T. And when we do that, that's going to slowly bring up your free tea and you're going to start to feel it. It's going to start to course through your veins and you'll truly feel what it feels like to be activated. Now, as I alluded to earlier, we do genetics as well. And what we've, what we've discovered is some guys have got great genetics with testosterone. Some guys haven't. Some guys do great with a certain diet. Some guys don't. We're all over the shop. Not one diet fits all and not one strategy fits all. So we've got to really take that into consideration. And as I do more of these videos, I'll start piecing that together so you fully understand it. It's a bit of a journey to get there. But as you can see here, inflammation is a big problem on a standard panel, three and below. So imagine like like mine, last time I checked, 0.27, very, very good. And just say yours is a two, your doc says, you're good, but you're not good. You've got chronic low-grade inflammation, so we're not optimized. You're okay, but you're not there yet. And that's a big emphasis that I want to put forth. So we've got to optimize all of these blood panels in the optimal ranges. Does that connect the dots? Does that make sense? Because when that is true, everything starts coming back online. And that, my friends, is when you can start working on the mindsets to take you to the next level. Again, as I mentioned, when it comes to anxiety, I'm in the 98th percentile. So I shouldn't be able to speak on stage, but I do. And I love it because I finally got this right. It's taken me a long time to get there, but it's certainly worth the effort to get to that place. So some more blood panels, but before we go on, I just want to emphasize that the system is screwed us. They're brushing off low T and this is what we can expect if our T is low. So this is from a pristine publication in nature. There's many more of these publications out there. So certainly do your due diligence. This is, this is what low T causes. Decreased energy, vitality, well-being, and motivation. Sound familiar? Diminished physical and intellectual work performance. Decreased mood, feeling sad or blue. So they give you drugs for that. And as you learned on the previous video, and I'll show you again today, that those drugs Keep testosterone low. It's a paradox, isn't it? Impaired cognition, increased sleepiness and fatigue. Sound familiar? 
So you've also got poor concentration and memory. This is what they say, our memory is supposed to decline as we age. No, we need testosterone and all of our blood work in those optimal ranges and then we can thrive. We've also got increased waist circumference. Well, of course, reduced testes. And this is the problem. We're, we're all told that men, men's testosterone declines as we age. But as you saw in the first video, and I'll quote Professor Huberman, there are men in their 90s, which are not rare, it turns out, that are making as much testosterone and dihydrate testosterone as they were in their 20s. And Dr. J said the same thing to me. And again, he did a five-year PhD in hormones. He said, and I quote, that's right, what Professor Huberman said. It's, it's surprising how little it comes down as we age when we optimize our health. So we've been led astray for a very long time. Then you've got also things like gynecomastia. So that's the aromatization of testosterone. So we get a lot of fat around here, around our abs. Low sexual design, libido. Difficulty achieving satisfaction in the sack, all of those things. So why the hell are they brushing off low T when we start to look like that and we feel like worthless men? The system has screwed us, but we can fix this. So this is everything that Dr. Ken Berry has researched that we're prescribed by Big Pharma that not only lowers testosterone, but it biases the testosterone that we are making to go through that aromatase enzyme and turn into estrogen, so we become estrogen dominant. And just to play a couple of videos from the last video, and it's linked below, just to show you that Big Food and Big Pharma work together and they lobby the government to do thy bidding. Check this out. Yeah, it's not thriving. It's definitely suboptimal. It's frustrating, honestly. I mean, <clears throat> you know, especially on the topic of testosterone, because if your testosterone goes down, just your health in general goes down. So that opens the door to a bunch of prescription drugs. Yeah. And so the pharma companies are very, they're very excited about keeping your testosterone down <laughs> from a financial perspective. Exactly. As a business, as a business model, it's a good idea for them. It's their business model. So when your health starts to go to shit and your, your blood, you, you're not, not checking the right blood work and then not in those optimal ranges, we start to get sick inside. Stress in the body inside causes damage inside. And then Big Pharma comes along with their drugs, which just mask the problem. It's like putting a fucking Band-Aid on a bullet wound. It doesn't fix the problem at all. It just slows the progression of those diseases, which we can reverse. So check this out, Dr. Ken. All those things are symptoms of low testosterone. And there's a long list of prescription medications that you might be taking from your doctor, you know, your doctor that you trust, that could actually be plummeting your testosterone levels. I've got a YouTube video about medications that lower testosterone. In case any of you guys are taking a medication, you can watch that video and make sure you're not taking one that does, by definition, lower your testosterone but if a man has all these symptoms, he's got to get his, his testosterone checked, number one. And number two, he's got to start eating a proper human diet, which consists of the five steps I talked about earlier. Yeah. And then eating things that our DNA know is real food. Because uh, the, the word food is very often misused in our in modern society. Food should mean something that ha is full of nutrition, tastes good, and does not cause symptoms or conditions or inflammation. So that's the list that Dr. Ken was speaking about. And again, another research paper, low testosterone, metabolic syndrome, cardiovascular disease, erectile dysfunction. It's not a pretty picture, but just remember that you can fix this, but we've got to get these blood panels, the right ones tested and in those optimal ranges. Then you've also got more inflammation, you got leptin resistance, which means you're going to be hungrier. You'll give in to cravings. You got also reduced adiponectin, and adiponectin is a powerful fat loss hormone. You got uh, endothelial dysfunction, so your nitric oxide doesn't work too well, which simply means that you don't have great vaso vasodilation. So your blood pressure goes to shit. Then guess what they do? They put you on blood pressure medications, which further lower your T, 
take your free tea that you are making, what little you are making left through that aromatase enzyme turns into oestrogen and we continue to become oestrogen dominant. And then it goes without saying you'll, you'll have insulin resistance. So it's very difficult to drop the body fat. So low T is a big problem for a lot of men. And as I mentioned, Professor Huberman has said that the men in their 90s, which are not rare, they're making as much testosterone and dihydrotestosterone as they were in their 90s. We've been screwed. So one big problem, and it's linked below, Dr. Canberry instructed me about how to eat a proper human diet. So this is just a one that should work for a lot of people, and it's linked below. But look, this is a research paper, and it's all about the foods that we're, we're encouraged to eat amplifiers of systemic inflammation, the role of advanced glycation and lip oxidization and peroxide in our food, it's in our food supply. So it's gonna be, so even if you're under that three there, you still got that low grade inflammation. So your T is low, what T you are making is going to estrogen, we're becoming estrogen dominant. So you've got atherosclerosis, heart disease, you've got arthritis, that's because T is low, as we explored before. Remember, Dr. J said that when testosterone is at a certain level, it suppresses inflammation. You've got pulmonary disorders, asthma. You've also got 50 times more free radicals. Think about that. You've got so much more destruction going on inside your body. Then number five, endocrine disorders. So this is exactly what we're speaking about here. Endocrines are hormones and they are being disrupted. So this food is completely shortchanging us and they're recommending that we eat it. So Dr. Ken recommends the five steps you need to take. The video is linked below, but the most insidious thing of all that these foods do is they shorten your telomeres. That's just a fancy thing that scientists call accelerated aging, skin aging. All, all your body organs and skin, they're aging at an accelerated rate. So the way I like to think about it if you get the stress out of the body by understanding the right blood test and getting them in optimal ranges, that paves the way for us to work on the mindsets to take us to the next level. So in my opinion, Dr. J, Dr. Ken Berry, the system has screwed us. So it's very clear and obvious now. And Dr. Dadis, this is a great book you can get up, especially if you don't have a lot of energy. But as he says, and I quote, it can be frustrating when your blood tests are normal, but your health isn't. So basically that goes back to that optimal range. We need to get those blood, the blood panels in the optimal ranges there. And just for the sake of emphasis, I spoke to Dr. Amy B. Keelan. She's an expert in sexual performance and longevity. And I, I wanted to know more about T at the beginning of 2020. So I reached out to Dr. Amy and I did a podcast with her and I said, look, what's the consequences of men with low T? This is what she said and it shook me to the core. Oh, it's, also, that's right. it's also things that are even more important. You know, we know that men who have lower testosterone levels, they tend to have higher mortality rates in general. So all cause mortality is higher in men with the lowest quartile of testosterone levels. Um, so we're gonna see increases in things like cardiovascular disease, so heart attacks, strokes are gonna go up. Generally, if you have low testosterone, increased diabetes, increased obesity, um, you know, increased uh, problems with mood disorders, depression, insomnia, anxiety, all of that goes up as you have lower testosterone levels. And then certainly sexual dysfunction. So everything from low libido to low sperm counts and infertility are all associated with low testosterone. So it's not something that we should just brush off as being like, ah, it's no big deal. Like it's kind of a big deal. It actually means that our men are getting less and less healthy and they're more and more likely to to suffer from some kind of disease uh, problem. So what do you think? Do you think now that the system may have screwed us just a little bit? I think they have. So here's another blood panel. This comes from Dr. Dadis again. This is thyroid stimulating hormone and it's the holy grail to increase energy, testosterone, the lean muscular body that you want. Typical laboratory range, 0.5, 5.5. Optimal functional range, 1.8 to 3. Dr. Dennis went on to say in that book that when it's in those ranges up and down all over the place, it's actually causing damage to your thyroid organ. 
And he also mentioned in that book, there's six functional patterns of thyroid disease and there's 22 metabolic patterns, which is fixed through nutrition. So if you have had some damage to thyroid, you can fix that if it, you haven't left it too far. So you don't want to, you don't want to hold off. You want to make sure you get this right. So all I can say to you is there's a lot of functional medical professionals out there, scientists and medical doctors that are saying, what's going on? Well, why are we sick? It's the food. Why do we have this food, the food system? Why do we have the food system, food policies, big food, big pharma? It's a $50 trillion a year industry. So the system has caused a lot of destruction in our body for a long time. And this is Dr. J when I first spoke to him, we first started working together. And this is a caliber of information that you get from these PhD scientists that are working within functional ranges. It's going to be pretty hard to produce testosterone in and of itself. Is that right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, they've done studies. I was, I was giving a talk for the special forces in America recently. These guys at that level, they're going for optimal. They're not messing around, you know? No. Yeah. So special forces, they're not mucking around. Neither should we if we want to play a big game. So as I mentioned at the beginning of this, there's one test that you have to get right. Your iron, your ferritin because it can screw up all of those hormones. And the way that it does that, right here, so when you've got iron overload and your ferritin is way off the chart there, and I'll show you where it should be shortly, it screws up the pituitary, so you, get, you can get secondary hypogonadism. Hopefully it's not primary yet, you don't want primary, and secondary hypothyroidism, so your thyroid starts to tank. You also get problems with the heart, with iron overload, the liver, cirrhosis, and liver cancer. The pancreas starts to tap out, so you get diabetes. And the gonads here, they shrink, and also it triggers arthritis. So a symptom of this is body aches and pain, inflammation, and being overweight. So that one thing alone, even if everything else is right, can be short-changing your testosterone. So as you can see in this research paper, Iron overload, hypogonadism, infertility, sexual dysfunction, low testosterone, decreased libido. And over here, it also causes insulin resistance. So how do you fix it? It's really simple. You donate blood. So that will drop your ferritin. Now, the problem with ferritin is that in a standard panel, I've seen these ranges. I've seen it from 30 to 300. I've seen it 50 to 500. So where should it be? Dr. J recommends that you get it between 50 and 100. Dr. Ken Berry recommends you get it between 30 and 70. So that's the science. And I try and get mine around about 50 to maximum about 80, 90, and I just donate blood and get it back when it goes above that. So all you got to do is donate blood. Now, one time I got my blood work checked, my, my ferritin was 341 and it took two blood draws to get it back down to optimal. So all you gotta do is donate blood. So you're helping some poor person that needs blood too, and you're also decreasing your ferritin levels there. And finally, what I'm gonna walk you through over several videos in the future here are the nine steps that you need to take. So I'm just gonna walk you through a couple then I'll go on to show the blood panels, the simple ones, and also the more advanced ones that you can get. And if you want to work with a V8 specialist, where to go to find a V8 specialist in your area. So the first thing we have to understand, the system screwed us. If you want to be the man that you were born to be, you want to increase your earning potential, you want to have energy, you want to have that lean muscular physique, we have to consider that the system is busted and they're forcing us to become estrogen dominant and erectile dysfunction soon follows. So what we have to do is look to the new science and that's people like Dr. Dr. J, also people like Dr. Ken Berry. There's many, many, many legends out there that look at the right panels. And then what we have to do is what I'm talking about here today. We have to get a comprehensive metabolic blood panel 
And the way that you do that, I'll just, this, this is a very short one that you can get. And I'll just put two more onto what Dr. Ken says that I believe we need to get checked as well. So listen to this. Are you metabolically healthy? The following tests will reveal whether you really are metabolically healthy or not. The first is a hemoglobin A1C test. This will tell you what your blood sugar has been averaging over the past three months. The next test is a fasting insulin level. This will tell you if you are hyperinsulinemic or not. If you're currently injecting insulin, then you'll need to get a C peptide instead. This will tell you if your pancreas is still producing insulin or not, or if it's producing too much. The next test is an HDL cholesterol. This is sometimes called a good cholesterol, but you want this to be as high as possible. The next test is a triglyceride level, which is you want to be as low as possible. Finally, you want to get a CRP or an HSCRP or a cardiac CRP. This is going to tell you how much inflammation is going on in your body at that current moment. I've got much more information about this and much else on my YouTube channel. Okay, so add to that iron and vitamin D. Now, where you can find out what ranges that you need to get it in and what tests to actually get, I've got the video link below. It goes to Dr. Ken Berry. And he's got a link to a PDF that you can download. And that's going to give you all the blood panels that you should get done and also what are the optimal ranges. Now, if you want to work with a V8 specialist, and that's what I think about, I've got a V8 engine inside me and I want to kick an ass. Right, I want to be a top performer, cognitively, physically, and emotionally. So this video is linked below, and you can go and find a V8 specialist there. Now, as I mentioned in the beginning of this video, you know, as Huberman says and Dr. J said, that there are men in their 90s, and it's not rare. They're making a lot of testosterone and dihydrate testosterone comparable to what they were in their 90s. But the big problem becomes if you leave it too late, and you probably won't like to hear this, but Dr. Ken Berry warns. Absolutely. It's often too late by the time yeah. you've, you've become financially comfortable. Yeah. Very often you've done so much damage to every tiny artery in your body yeah. Yeah. that you're now stuck with permanent erectile dysfunction or permanent forgetfulness or permanent insomnia, permanent shortness of breath, chest pain, right? Yeah. Gut issues. <clears throat> yep. You've done so yep. much damage, some of it can't be taken back. And yeah. that, that's yeah. why I'm so active on social media, constantly reaching out and trying to help people. Because once it's too late, you might regain a little bit of that function, but it's never going to be like it once was. And it's never going to be like it could have been. Yeah. And that's very yeah. sad if you think about it, that somebody's basically handicapped for the rest of their life, physically or mentally or emotionally because of bad dietary decisions that they made for the first few decades of their life that they didn't realize were bad decisions because they had never been trained properly. Yeah. So the system's got a lot to answer for. So it really comes, what I always like to think about is what I call the testosterone equation because we know what it does for men now. As you can see there, it just makes you the man you were born to be. So what's the chances of you achieving the body you want with low T? It's going to be hard. It's going to be a lot of sacrifice, time delay, and you'll be very frustrated. What's the likelihood of you being and you know just switched on, activated, and the default state of the human man is active? It's to, to provide for their family, to stand up and fight for what he believes in. Because when testosterone comes up, it lowers fear and anxiety and increases motivation confidence, effort, courage, all of it. And that provides us an unfair advantage to create the life that we want, that we deserve for us and our family. And you just got to think about what Professor Huberman said, but also Dr. J there. Where do you want to be at this point in your life? Down here struggling, or do you want to be living your best life? The system has screwed us for a very long time and we can get it back. So you probably be thinking, what is the safe levels of testosterone? That's a good question. So Dr. J, when he did his five-year PhD, he crawled through mountains of data all the way back to the 1940s. Guess what he discovered when they first started testing for testosterone? 
a man in their 50s, you know, I'm 52 this year, had an average of well over double what it is today. So that graph there, it really started to, to, to plummet down since the 1940s to the late 80s there. So as you can see on screen there, right here, 87, 89, man my age, under that 550. So we're still kind of safe. So that's giving you a first clue. Now, 2002, 2004, we're kind of down here, you know, around about 400, getting close to 350. But if you cast your eyes to the percentage of obese adults in America, the same is true here in Australia, when our testosterone was above 500, we were still relatively lean. So that's what Dr. J says. That's the safe level of testosterone. You can certainly get it higher than that. But what we have to optimize for critically is free T and free dehydro. As you can see here though, the testosterone, you know, beginning of the 2000s was pretty low. And look at us, we're a mess, we're tired, we're lazy, we're apathetic, we feel like lazy losers. The system has been screwing us for a very long time. So what we have to understand is that what I've learned in my experience, we need to do these nine things. So the first thing we have to do is find out where we're busted and sick inside. And the only way we can do that is get a comprehensive metabolic blood panel, then find out where we're busted inside, then fix it. And we can fix it. That's the beautiful thing. So when you get to that place, you'll be in a position to segue into step number four. And that step number four and number five is what I'll do on the next video after this. So we've got a few more videos to get through, but when you get to this place, you're basically set free. The stress is out of the body. You'll know exactly what to do. Is it going to be easy? No, it's not a magic pill. It's going to take time. And it just depends on how old you are and how much damage the system's dumb ass advice has caused in your body. As Dr. Ken Berry said, we have to fix this issue. So, if you've got any questions, legends, drop them in the comments below. And if you like what I'm about, tell me that this is good information. And if you think it is good information, it's okay if you don't. I like honest critiques as well. If you think it's, if you think it's good, give it a like and give it a share because that's going to help me reach more men to finally get these nine steps right, to get their body in a position to work on the mindsets to take them to the next level. So there it is, legends. Again, any questions, there's more information below. Everything's linked below. And the next video should come out in two or three days. And that's step number four in what I call the rebuild method. So that's the whole point. We're rebuilding ourselves from the ground up into the men we were born to be. Give us the biggest unfair advantage to get to that place.